Well, the, 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 the derivative uh, castle, right? The, the house of cards of, of 1.5 to $2 quadrillion of bankrupt, kited, insolvent derivatives, this is permanently on the brink, right? And their, their demand is always increase the looting rate, increase the rate of exploitation in the third world. And if governments get in the way, as they necessarily do, smash the, uh, the governments. So uh, right now, though, I, I think we can look at it internationally. If you look at the UN General Assembly, in that vote on the anti-Syria resolution of about two and a half, three weeks ago now, there were 12 no votes. Well, that was Russia, China, Iran, Syria, Venezuela, and, and their group, the ALBA group. But those uh, didn't count. I mean, I mean, only the Security uh, Council votes counted of Russia and yeah, China. Wait, wait. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to show you the way the world is going. 12 no votes. There were 17 abstentions, some important countries there. And then there were 30 countries that just didn't show up, right? The Philippines, they just didn't show up. The heat was too great. They wanted to vote no or yes, but they, 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 couldn't, they couldn't take the heat. So there are about 60 countries, one third of the world, that despite the most intense arm twisting, blackmail, uh, bribery and whatever else, we're not supporting the imperialist rev resolution against Syria. Now, that's a sign of the times. Once you've said Russia, China, that's half the world, right? The biggest country geographically, biggest country demographically, Iran, leading Muslim state, Venezuela, leading South American state, go through the list, right? Um, all kinds of countries that, that could not see their way to, uh, to support this, this monstrosity. So I think that's a, that's a real change. One third of the world is not not playing ball with the Anglo-Americans in some way. Well, I want to be clear. The Anglo-Americans are not pro-America. They're not pro-Europe. They're not pro-liberty. In closing, right. Euro, open world government run by private banks, all being announced, everything else that's happening over there, admissions that we're going into a deeper depression, long-term view. Where's all this going? Well, again, you, you always say, take the subjective factor out, and I can't because, you know, some of us are here and you're here and we're all here. Um, I think uh, what, what you need is, um, is a movement to break the power of finance capital, and that's to break the power of Wall Street finance capital, and I think that could emerge uh, at, at any point. Uh, there's certainly plenty of masses in motion in Europe, here in the United States, We've got all kinds of struggles going on against the fascist governors of the Midwestern states. Let's take Michigan, right? If you don't like dictatorship, you're not going to like Governor Snyder of Michigan because he wants to, he's got a law where he says he can become the dictator of Detroit and Flint and Grand Rapids and Traverse City and all those places in Michigan. He can be the dictator as soon as he says, you're bankrupt, I'm taking you over, I'm sending in a commissar who's going to rule you by decree. So you're basically, you're talking about wiping out democracy. Yeah, let me, let me add a caveat real. to that. It, it's, not just a, it's not just Michigan. Rhode Island's doing it all over. This is the third world model it's where they body. induce you into fraud. The state signs you on to the derivatives. And then they're coming in and taking control and saying no more city council or, or the city council can be administrative. I mean, this is corporate takeover. Yes, I think, I think that's the cutting edge of the struggle against dictatorship inside this, this country. And uh, again, those, those blue collar workers out in the Midwest. The funny story, you know, you go overseas and they say, tell us about Occupy Wall Street. It started in September, right? And I say, no, it started with the occupation of Madison, Wisconsin, back in February. Uh, you know, sure, but the system co-opted that. But well, let me throw on. It, it didn't, it's, that's what the system tried to suppress. And then they give you this, this substitute, right, which is the, the petty bourgeoisie and the lumpen proletariat in the form of, of Occupy Wall Street with David Graeber and the Ad Busters Institute, right? This, this is not what you need. Obviously, you need those people too, but not those leaders. So it seems to me you've got a mass strike process going on. You've got the ingredients there. You need what you always needed, program, leadership, some kind of organization and some kind of strategy. And at that point, you could uh, you could make rapid progress. All right, so I, I, I understand. I, I, you know, I don't I don't know if I subscribe to all those government solutions because it always gets taken over by a bunch of criminals. I'm talking but about mass struggle, I'm talking about the only possible way to go. I'm afraid we look at the the presidential campaign. I I don't see how how this could uh, how anybody could could 
could go into it. I mean, I, it seems well, to listen, me that's a pretty much decided thing more and more between Obama and Mitt Romney. We're going to have to discuss that at a future date, but we're, we're out of time here. I want to oh, ask okay. you about the fact of Congress, who's been pro-war, pro-tyranny, pro-torture, pro-every form of corruption you can imagine, is now getting mad that Obama and SecDef Panetta and the rest of them are telling them, hey, we're going to launch wars without you now. You don't even matter. And Congress is finally freaking out. And they're saying our authority is these international bodies themselves that are controlled by the central banks, the UN, NATO, groups like this. Why do you think the system's racing to put in a classical tyranny here in the United States? Well, this is obviously the, 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 the motor force comes from the economic breakdown crisis. In other words, the, the fact that the capital structures of New York and London are collapsing pushes them to demand, again, more loot, more exploitation, more sacking, uh, downward pressure on the standard of living, bust all the unions, tear up the contracts, destroy the social safety net, use the proceeds for new and better bailouts, new and better uh, subsidies for the, for the rich and, and, and super rich. So that's, that's the, the, the motor force that's, uh, that's doing it. But of course, that can very well uh, provoke countervailing social movements, right? That's the history of the 20th century is that. A super austerity policy will lead to a social explosion. And the big question then is, who is going to lead the social explosion? Will somebody be there with leadership, or are you going to get ad busters, David Graeber, Michael Moore, Noam Chomsky, and others that guarantee absolute defeat? Controlled opposition. Right, sure. Controlled left, you, controlled if it's right. Controlled, it controlled means it's going, to be, it's going to be destroyed. I have to say, with, with Occupy Wall Street, when you look at this you know, from retrospectively, the anarchists who took over Occupy Wall Street had really one program. They wanted to have a hippie commune in the park with no demands, no nothing, nothing political. They said, we're going to start living the new utopia, right? We're going to live the new world that we want in the park. And and no demands, right? They're not going to do anything for working people. Not sure, for but that's not even as bad as the new liberal calls for wars because there's some boogeyman off in the bushes uh, there in Central Africa. Webster, Tarpley.net, uh, author. Look forward to having you on the radio soon. Thank you. Thank you for spending time with us. Good luck, Alex. See you soon. We're going to go to break. Let me see you by during the break. Wow. I mean... Love him or hate him, his overall analysis is spot on, and he's been all over the world. i got to get him back on about his trip to Iran. He also went to Syria. This guy has a lot of courage. Uh, and certainly what he's talking about with AFRICON and this invasion is so real. We're going to come back and talk about the TSA didn't just block the video of an engineer exposing the fact that their scanners are a fraud and don't stop bombs. They're now telling members of the press, you don't talk to this guy if you know what's good for you. You don't talk to the press in America. This is land of the slave, home of the coward, New World Order Central. Well, we're extremists. We think in America there is a press, there is free speech. I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I believe there should be due process as well. I believe that you have a right to visit InfoWars.com, and if you believe in what we're doing, become a subscriber at PrisonPlanet.tv. We have 15-day free trials running right now. We'll be right back after this quick break with our next guest. He's the guy that runs the website TSA Out of Our Pants. One is a serial hypocrite who lobbied for Freddie Mac before the housing crisis and for the individual mandate before Obamacare. Another, a counterfeit conservative who opposes right to work, massively increased spending, and funded Planned Parenthood. Finally, a flip-flopper who's been on all sides, supported TARP bailouts, and provided the blueprint for Obamacare. Three men, one vision, more big government, more mandates, less freedom. One man stands apart, ready to deliver real change, voting against every tax increase and every unbalanced budget every time. A real plan to cut a trillion dollars year one and to balance the budget in three. Pro-life, pro-liberty, guided by faith and principle. Ron Paul, the one who will restore America now. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message.